much interesting to bring to you guys another super exciting episode of Events Moment on Galaxy Television. And like always, I'm always excited to bring this to you. So today, guys, I'm working at Musan Center, and it is for the premiere of the TV series in Love and Ashes. You know, presently, a lot of things are going on in Nigeria. You know, talking about kidnaps, Dabchi girls. Some of them were released, and of course, we've had the bottom, the girl, bottom girls been kidnapped for a long time. So today, guys, in Love and Ashes, will be leading us to the stories that happened then, okay? It centers around this audience and every other thing going on in Nigeria when it comes to, you know, terrorism. So guys, it's going to be interesting. And of course, this put together by Tubaba Foundation. So I can't wait to see how Tubaba, you know, got himself involved in something like this. A lot of people USA, a lot of people partnered with them to bring this to reality. It's going to be interesting today. And of course, don't go anywhere because I'm going to be chatting with everyone that has to do with love and ashes. My name is Fukeoshi. Thank you so very much for joining me. You of all people know that Mexico is the last place on earth to visit. Welcome to Meduguri. <laughs> You're welcome. We have a quiet place we can sit. We have a lot to talk about. Yes, my office. I thought that we had agreed no questions. Would you prefer answers to money? You call me a beggar when you're a thief. You stole my wife! You think this place revolves around you? This is our life. When you're blind, you feel like what you're looking for is out there, but you just can't see it. Tell you something. Don't think because you're giving me money that you can come here and talk to me anyhow you like. The day he chose to abandon school after all the money I spent on him is the day I wash my hands. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Guys, I'm joined by Mr. John Oyeku, and today he's representing the North East Regional Initiative. Yeah? Okay, so one of the major sponsors of Love and Ashes. How are you doing, sir? I'm fine. Okay, good to have you here. My pleasure. I'm sorry to intrude, but this, are you, should I say you're a chief or uh, from the royal family or something maybe, like that? Maybe, maybe something like that. Uh, <laughs> right, so let's talk about why we are here in Love and Ashes. Why did um, Neri decide to, you know, collaborate with them to make this movie happen? You see, Neri's work is focused on ensuring that we counter the, um, the, the violent narrative in the Nazis about Boko Haram and ISIS. So we thought that um, mainstreaming some of our activities and those messages through movie will be a winner any day, any time. So we wanted to showcase that, look, in spite of all of that, there is still love. People are still falling in love. People are still going through all those challenges and uh, moving on high. Okay. Yep. So what do you think is the situation of Northeast right now, concerning, considering everything that is going on in Nigeria? Majority of people in Lagos do not understand the narrative in the Northeast. So, Northeast is becoming quite different. People are, life is returning to normalcy. We still have those occasional issues. Of course, we still have an issue like uh, Dapchi girls, but people are coming back to life. There is nightclub in, um, in Meduguri, which many people in Lagos don't believe to exist. Yes. Madams go there. People go there. Nigerians go there. Non Nigerians go there. Yeah, they have fun like we do in Lagos, uh, or like people in Lagos do. Join me right now is Aisha, and she's one of the writers of the series. Okay, tell me about the uh, part where you wrote. First of all, let me ask you, my bad guys, how you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Gorgeous. You <laughs> thank you. All right, then. So tell me about your involvement in, in Love and Ashes. Um, well, basically, we had to um, develop the plot for the story, and then I wrote a few episodes, okay. and all. Uh, it was a lot of work in Joss with a lot of coffee and um, <laughs> yeah, but it was it was it was an experience. Yes. So, did you have to do some researches, you know, to get the stories to put together, or they were just coming? How? Just tell me what oh, was the inspiration. Yes, we had to do research. I mean, um, one of our writers had to go to Meduguri and experience a lot of what they are going through. We had to ask questions. We had to work with them. We worked with researchers as well. Yeah, and so, I mean, inspiration tends to spring up from research. So I can't wait yeah. to see what you put together, you know. What time your episodes? Um, four and five. Okay. I'll be watching out. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Have fun. Mulan, like U L A N. L A N, like Mulan. What does it mean? <laughs> well, it actually it means a lot of things. I can't Tell break it down. One out of those lot of things. 
funny thing it actually means like a creative person but who uses like metal as their medium for work so guys she's representing her, her name that's why she's one of the writers for the, in love and ashes All right so tell me about the parts that you wrote okay so i wrote the last three episodes which was really exciting for me because i got to sort of conclude what everybody's journey was and I really enjoyed writing about one of the characters, Falmata, who okay. someone should look, uh, people should look out for, okay. and yeah, it was it was very exciting. Okay, so what was the inspiration behind you know those parts that you wrote? Well, I mean, for me, it was lives that were very different from mine. Even though, like you know, in Nigeria, they would say I'm a northern girl, but it was, I mean, it was just so different from any life I knew, and it was interesting trying to dig into those lives and sort of not only make them make sense for myself, but for people that are watching to be able to relate in some way, you know, find connections. All right. Yeah. We'll watch out for the parts that you wrote in the last three episodes, yeah? The last three episodes. All right, then we'll watch out. When you got to hear about in Love and Ashes, what were the things that went through your mind? Well, um, the issues um, that were treated in, in our drama series in Love and Ashes is something that's always resonated with me. It's about our country and the problems in the different regions and how whatever happens in any region actually affects us as Nigerians together. It's not isolated to just that region, you understand? It's something that affects each and every one of us as Nigerians. And in particular, you know, our story is set in the backdrop of Meduguri, which is in the Northeast, and we know what has been happening in the Northeast. So um, it's a story about what's happening there, the characters that are affected, but more importantly also, the characters that respond to the needs of the people in the Northeast. Yes, primarily people like us. I know movies to be, we know when you're bringing something that is really happening in society into movies, it takes some effort. But not, when you're, now we're talking about, you know, an emotional, a sensitive part of what is happening, the real sense. That's talking about the Boko Haram insurgency generally. So, how was it like, you know, working on this project, relating it to the fact that it is something happening in the real sense and it is very sensitive? Well, of course, um, we're talking about human beings. And in talking about human beings, you need to be sensitive because um, you're dealing with people who are affected in different ways. And we're dealing with a situation which is affecting people and there's a lot of information and misinformation about it. So in tackling it, of course, we had to be real, okay? We had to be sensitive to the needs of the people. We also had to be careful and um, sincere in the kind of message we're passing, you understand? Because it's not just about heightening the controversies or the problems in the regions, no. It's about us having a sense of belonging in our country, knowing that something is happening over there and it's far away from us, but no, it's also something that is affecting Nigerians. So we should all pull together because whatever it is, it might be in the Northeast today, tomorrow it might be somewhere else. So whatever it is, wherever it is that it's happening, it's happening and it's affecting Nigerians. But like I said, we had to be sensitive too because we, we didn't want to offend a lot of people. And, yeah, yeah. No. We have to do something. She may not be the only one in the camp. I agree with you. Ten million naira for the foundation. Where did you get that kind of money from? Alaji Kundiri. Of all the people in Meduguri, you cannot possibly think to collect that scoundrel's money. And why? Because he does not have a drop of integrity. Can you not see where he stands to benefit from all this? All I see is 10 million naira and I know he's going to solve a lot of problems. Well, to be frank, I've acted in so many movies. I direct. I'm a cameraman. And uh, when I was casted for that role, I was kind of, why me? You understand? Because it's one of the major roles and uh, it's challenging. Uh, well, I'm used to roles that somebody, a director or a producer will just tell me, just use your dialogue or you create your words. And, but that one is word for word and it was, a, it was challenging to me. And moreover, it was uh, about Boko Haram, 
and I was my role was I was daring Boko Haram. I was telling people that Boko Haram is finished. A day after, they shot my wife. My wife died, and I had to run away. You understand what I mean? So, and um, the the you know the kind of crew that was put together to bring out this production is something else. So I am happy to be part of it. As you can see, this land has been in my family for years. We were thinking of selling it. But when I saw all these displaced people, I knew that this place could be put to a better use. And now hundreds of people are home again. Inshallah. Nafis at Abdullahi. I did a great job, yeah? Yes, you did. How you doing? I'm good. I'm great. All right, so briefly tell me about your involvement. You know, your, your character. Tell me about it. Okay, okay. So I played Mariam. Uh, yes, Mariam uh, personally is a very sensitive, uh, quiet, reserved, but then she's a fierce and a bold person. But uh, profession, she's a photographer. Okay. Yes. All right, so let's, you know, he's talking about sensitive part of what's something that is going on in Nigeria. You're not talking about Boko Haram, and then we're still um, going through the Dabchi girls being kidnapped and all that. So tell me, how does it feel for you to be involved in something very sensitive about your country? Uh, it feels really, really good uh, to be able to do something to pass uh, a good message across. But then it feels really, really bad seeing like how a lot of people go through pain every day, and we just hope it stops one day. Yes. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. It's nice, and it's always um, you feel very important to be part of something that uh, sent positive message to the people and also an incident that uh, a lot of people just heard about it but don't really know what's really going on okay. but this movie went uh, as far as bringing out so many vital informations that a lot of Nigerians need to know or if they know they would change their perceptions or they would change the way they they are looking at the issues of Boko Haram and also it will give a lot of room for other people to want to come and help because what has really happened more or less is a little bit let's say 90 percent past it's a past something but up to date a lot of people are still suffering people are still in the camp people are still living below poverty People are, you know, diseases and whatever it's within the camp and this medication is very low, so many things. So uh, it's something that is more or less like a wake-up call to Nigerians, to those that can help, to other donor agencies, organizations, governments, to do more based on what they are doing. And apart from that, to see for themselves how some of this thing happens and what those people have gone through. How are you doing, sir? Yes, sir. I did. Yes, sir. All right, then. Your foundation, too, Baba Foundation, is a major part of In Love and uh, She's TV series. Tell me, how does it feel to be a part of something that is very sensitive to Nigeria? You're not talking about the insurgency and everything going on. Mm. So, sorry. How does it feel like to be a part of, you know, something very sensitive you know, to Nigeria? Me, so right? How does it feel to be part of the insurgency? No, no, no. Fair, fair no, <laughs> It's about, okay. you know, talking about the Bukwara Mises and everything like that. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm not about to scare you. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> that was scary. We are safe. We are safe. <laughs> All right. So tell me. No, but it's, um, it's, it's always nice to be part of a, a movement that is geared towards bringing peace. It's always part of a movement that, you know, is geared towards making people respect each other's beliefs. And each other's um, or if each other's way, you understand what I'm saying. So for me, that is the ultimate. That is, if, if all this if all this goes well and people actually listen and they actually take to take take home the message, Nigeria will become a better place for us for all of us. So the movie's talking about northeastern part of Nigeria, but I know you're from North Central, yeah. Benue State. I'm from Benue State. Yeah. <laughs> so you're still part of the North. Doing so tell me. Belts. Yeah. Middle Belt, now we're from. Mm -hmm. All right, so tell me, what do you think is the situation of North in Nigeria generally? Talking about, you know, we are right here in Lagos, we don't know what's going on, but being someone that is from that kind of area, what do you think is the situation? 
I think right now with the whole of Nigeria, we have a serious problem, and that's the problem of acute ignorance, poverty of the mind. You know, there is so much ignorance, like, you know, many people, many people make statements on Twitter, on Instagram, without really even thinking about what the impact of their statement would be. You know, so the ignorance level is, is on a very, very high level. And we need to start changing that. We need to start understanding so many things. We need to stop being naive and start understanding that, look, we can't let religious leaders, tribalist, tribal leaders, politicians, we can't let them continue doing this to us. We can't. We can't just let them, you know. So we have to stand up. We have to wise up, you know. We have to just open our eyes. It's, I mean, it's, it's becoming too ridiculous, you understand? Because me, I know that all this has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with... Uh, it's all politics and, 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 and greedy people. You understand what I'm saying? You know, so we just have to open our eyes, man. Besides this right now, so can you tell us any other thing you're working on besides working on the Love and Ashes? Um, I'm working on a couple of songs for my next album. And um, I'm just working generally and then I'm minding, I'm minding my family and minding my business. You know? yes. okay, I'm being joined by the new sign, the fresh signee of Hypertech Records. OTK, how are you doing? I'm doing very good, thank you. Alright, so tell me, what does that mean, OTK? Oh, uh, it means like, you know, pe when people talk behind you, it stays behind you. Really? Yeah, it's an Asian name. Confused. Really? Yeah. Okay, so it's not O, like letter O, T, K. It's O, T, I, K, E, O, T, K. Oh, T, K, -E. oh, okay, awesome stuff. Yeah. All right, then, so tell me, how does it feel like to be, you know, with, you, you walked in with Tsubaba, yeah. and that alone is some kind of respect. So how does it feel <laughs> like to be under Hypertech Records? Well, it feels really great. It feels amazing to be part of uh, Hypertech and, you know, just be doing music and you know being just excited it's exciting times you know okay. yeah awesome. All right, then. so tell me what kind of songs are you do you do let us know more about you being in Niper Tech well I do Afro 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 beat you know R&B a little bit taste of R&B to it but you know just really good music and just you know doing something that can take Nigerian Afro Afro pop music to another another level <laughs> Some get eyes, but they know be to see. Some get legs to walk up, but for that same walk up, them get hit by a car. You just never know where the life go bring to you. Never let the voice of defeat to sing to you. And as you they go. Continue to do what you sabi do. No go look who chase, cause some people they press. Just continue to chase. Them don't they cry again? I they see them from far away. So with a play, I got to find a way. Sorrow, tears and pain. We either lose or gain. I cannot stand the rain. I tell me who. Watershed Productions, and of course the Northeast Regional Initiative. Please another round of applause for them. Okay, it's time for the trailer of In Love and Ashes. You of all people know that Monaco is the last place on earth I want to visit. Welcome to Meduguri. <laughs> You're welcome. We have a quiet place we can sit. We have a lot to talk about. Yes, my office. I thought that we had agreed no questions. Would you prefer answers to money? You call me a beggar when you are a thief. You stole my wife! You think this place revolves around you? This is our life. When you're blind, you feel like what you're looking for is out there, but you just can't see it. Tell you something. Don't think because you're giving me money that you can come here and talk to me anyhow you like. The day he chose to abandon school after all the money I spent on him is the day I wash my hands. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Cast, Megotanwa. 
passion project because I mean the subject matter is one that I'm very passionate about if you know anything about me and my career so when I was got called you know to play this role for me it was an opportunity to just lend a voice to the course and you know be a part of a great subject one that people need to understand basically in Love and Ashes just tells you that behind the, the pictures you see on TV the attacks the, the blood the fights the bombs and everything the killings they are human beings who are living regular lives. They are human beings who, you know, who love, who feel pain, you know, who aspire to do things, who be, aspire to become footballers, actors, photographers, and they try. There is life, you know, in their own world. They live and experience life as well in their own way. Yeah. Yeah, in love and ashes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This was the first face, first face you had to see, you know. Or you start watching the film. Yeah, you, your face was the first, yeah? Yes, it was. So in love like and ashes. Start, starting, you know, this big, big project. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was a wonderful project. It was an absolute fun. I grew up in Jos, so we shot partly in Jos, Bauchi, and Medugri. I've been to Medugri once. It was an absolute fun to just travel, go back home. I will say, and just the cast, the crew, they were amazing people. It was an amazing experience. Had to go, you know, to a strange land. We all see. Lots of Nigerians usually actually see uh, Medjugorje as somewhere dangerous to go to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And then in the movie, you had to go there for work. Mm -hmm. So tell me, being there and of course experiencing everything that goes around goes on there, what do you think is the situation of North East presently? Well, at the moment, you can't really say. For me, my experience was it's a very peaceful place. The people are extremely warm. Like, there was a time we were in the hotel and I had a problem with my shoe, so I just stepped out of the hotel and there was this guy who was making shoes and stuff. And this other guy sitting under the tree was like, what, what's wrong? And I'm like, I wanted to fix my shoe. I speak Hausa. So I said, I wanted to fix my shoe. And he said, of course, come, come, come. So he called the guy, come over, come, do this, fix his shoe. Bought water for me, told somebody else, bring this. Have I tried this? I'm new here. He saw us going to the hotel. He was so warm. He became my friend. Before I left, he took my number and he calls me. Up till today, he still calls me. And that's the general feel of the Medjugorje people. The people in Borno State, they are very warm. It's just, it's, I, I feel it's just a shame that all this insurgence has to happen there because it now, it now puts a bad reputation on the place. But they are very, it's one of the nicest people you will ever meet. All right, then the movie, though it's Nigeria, and it's, it was acted in Nigeria, but we had, we got to see you know, a white lady act in the movie. All right then, okay, I forgot your name, so just tell me. Uh, my name is Muffy Potter, I'm one of the executive producers of In Love and Ashes. Awesome. Okay, so where did you, where are you from? I'm from Sydney, Australia. All right then, well, have you been staying in Nigeria for a while? Uh, I was here for several months um, during the, the development and the production and a bit of post-production of the series. So basically the movie brought you, the series brought you down to Nigeria? Oh yes. The, why? Why did you decide to take it up? Oh, uh, look, this was just too good an offer to refuse and I, and I just had a terrific time. I was extremely impressed with um, uh, so, so the technical capabilities of the Nigerian team. We had a wonderful cast. It's a beautiful country to film in and um, the set was a great joy. I walked on set and I got a hug from everyone on, on the crew. It was, it was, it was a lovely experience. From the story of the the story generally and what you got to see in the movie and all that, what can you say about the state of Nigeria, a situation presently? What can you say? And um, with everything you've seen in the few months that you've been in Nigeria, what can you say about Nigeria? Well, I think In Love and Ashes really shows a, like a true life a demonstration of what people in the north have experienced. And as an Australian or a Nigerian, everyone can empathise because we're all human beings. We all have families and 
parents and husbands and all the everyone has these human life experiences and when and, and when people's lives are taken away when their businesses are destroyed when their land is taken off them when, when when women are abducted it's a very important issue and one that we can all connect with as human beings the country director of Neri, that's a northeast regional, regional initiatives with me what's your name sir my name's sharif katib you know, why did it take up, you know, partnering with In Love and Ashes? You got the script and all that. What was the main reason why you decided to be a partner of this great project? So we, the idea originated with us. So we're working in the Northeast. Um, two main aims for the program, to counter the spread of violence and extremism, and also to reconstitute communities so they are stronger in the face of whatever challenge there is. We saw quite early on that actually the country tends to think of the problem in Maiduguri as somebody else's problem, not as a Nigerian problem. So our hypothesis was if we can create a sense of national ownership, national possession of the problem and also unification around the solution, so those are the fundamental principles of Nigeria, then actually we can make Nigeria better as a whole. So uh, we conceived this, we put it out for offer, we found Watershed willing to take it on, not only at a minimal level, but heart and soul and they ran with it and we're delighted at the product. Fantastic team of actors, fantastic team of producers. Two faces gotten in involved, so we couldn't have asked for better. So your husband was a you know, vital part of the project, Love and Ashes. Well, he did the soundtrack. Yeah. He did the soundtrack. Yeah, and of course, a partner too. So how do you feel about that? It's a good feeling, it's a good project, it's a, it's a good story. The message behind the story is brilliant, so yes, I love it. I saw, I saw a post recently on Tonya Marcos, um, Tonya Abraham's um, page about a movie, you were there. I think I saw your picture there. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the title though. It's, um, Finance God is a new movie produced yeah, so by. Tell us quickly about that. Fan. Yes, a new movie you produced by that, Fan. I can't tell you guys anything. You guys have to anticipate that. You have All right, to. there we will. Thank All you right, so yes. much. So I got to find a way. Sorrow, tears, and pain. You either lose or gain. Guys, I'm really trying not to be emotional right now because in Love and Ashes, we saw it, yes, we saw just a few episodes though, but then it's so much emotional. In Love and Ashes talks about, you know, Boko Haram, Mr. James, and of course a lot of these people are going through a lot, talking about the IDP camps and the IDP camps and all that. Okay, but guys, let me tell you, you need to pray for Nigeria, we need to pray for Nigerians. If other countries are proud of what is going on, they're really rooting for the best in Nigeria. How about you that you are a Nigerian? Thank you so much for watching today. My name is Funke and of course, it's been fun right here on Galaxy TV. It has been the premiere of Love and Ashes and of course, Events for Men. See you next week. Always pray for your country, Nigeria. Never let the voice of defeat to sing to you. And as you they go, continue to do anything you sabi do. No go look put your face, cause some people they crazy as gone.